After publishing my updated home network tour video, many of you asked me to show more about my firewall setup and all of these VPN connections. So let's talk about it. So let's start with covering my firewall and Supermicro server that it runs on. I got a lot of questions about this. The hardware I chose is a Supermicro 5018D-FN8T. Ultimately, this is nothing more than an Intel Xeon rack server. However, Supermicro specifically designed it to be used as a firewall or router appliance, hence the one use small form factor with the front-facing network ports. The fans are also designed to be reversible to change the direction of airflow. This gives you numerous mounting options. In my case, I've populated the firewall's motherboard with 32GB of RAM and a 500GB NVMe drive. The appliance also features IPMI management, meaning I can connect to the keyboard, mouse, or video remotely over Ethernet, even when the box is powered off or even if it crashes. Now, being that at the end of the day this is simply a server, you can run anything on here that you want. I chose to run PFSense. It's the world's most popular open source firewall, far surpassing its rivals. With this level of popularity, it means a rock-solid reliable code base, incredible community support, and lots of third-party packages and integrations. That being said, there are plenty of other good choices, including OpenSense and Untangle to name a couple. So it might not surprise you then that most of my friends and family also run PFSense for their firewall. So let's talk about a VPN between friends and family. I have many VPNs up and running, some for remote devices, some for site-to-site -site connections, I'm only going to discuss two of them today in detail for brevity and because I thought they were the most interesting. My oldest son, my brother, and I all live here in North Texas. I live in the northern part of a city named Keller. My brother lives in a small town named Kennedale. And my son lives in West Fort Worth. My brother is 23 miles away as the bird flies, or about 37 kilometers, while my son is 14 miles or 23 kilometers away. So let's stop right there. Some of you are already saying, 23 miles away, you should just use Ubiquiti Air Fibers. At that distance, you'll get 1.5 gigabits between you. Well, we actually considered doing just this, and that would have been awesome. Unfortunately, it was just not meant to be. If you look at the Air Fiber planning map, you can see we are link obstructed at both locations due to terrain between our houses. So no Air Fibers for us. In fact, the only solution that would fix this would be for us both to install towers at our houses and install the Air Fibers atop them. However, these towers would have to be 246 feet tall. Uh, that's 75 meters. I don't think our neighbors or the city would be too happy if we were to do this. So, VPN it is then. Luckily, I am in an area where I have symmetrical gigabit service from Frontier Communications. My son's neighborhood has AT&T fiber, but he's only willing to spend enough to get symmetrical 300 megabit service. And, poor David, where he lives, he can only get Spectrum Internet at about 90 meg down and 10 meg up. As mentioned previously, I have the Supermicro server as my PFSense box. And my son and David both have my favorite Amazon no-name boxes for PFSense. These boxes are fanless while still being quite powerful. With that all in place, we simply connect with the devices using OpenVPN, which is the most popular open source VPN software on the planet and it is built into PFSense out of the box. Okay, so that's how we're configured, but what in the world do we do with all these tunnels? Well, you'll remember from my recent home network tour that I have two Synology NAS boxes and two Supermicro One U servers in my lab. All of this compute and storage can be accessed over the VPN. That means my son and David both have access to all of my Synology file shares and any virtual servers I'm running. Now, Plex sharing, of course, works over the open internet, but in our case, Plex appears to all of our devices as a local service, and therefore tunnels over the VPN. This makes Plex traffic 100% invisible to our ISPs. They can't shape it, throttle it, or block it. Okay, so you'll also remember from my tour video that I run Observium for system and network monitoring. In addition to monitoring all of my own devices, this box pulls SNMP across the VPN tunnels for all of my son and David's devices tracking uptime, firewall status, bandwidth usage, storage usage, wireless access points, and much more. Well, except for David's non-enterprise dumb switches. I also run a central syslog server. Remote devices send their log files here for storage for 90 days. This is super handy for times when things go bump in the night. Not only can we look back in the logs to see what happened, we can also correlate logs across devices to see when one device causes something to go wrong on another. 
For example, if a camera keeps rebooting, it might be due to the switch running out of power over Ethernet capacity. Of course, it should also be noted that this VPN also works in the opposite direction, allowing me to access David's file shares as well. Now, some of you who know networking are probably wondering about security with this setup. You might be wondering, what happens when David gets some virus or 8-bit malware on his network? Won't that just propagate to me? <laughs> well, no. We're not a bunch of boneheads. These open VPN connections have full firewall policies running on them, and we only allow very specific traffic to cross them. This means that only port 445 is open to my NAS, for example. Okay, so let's talk about some other things that connect to my VPN. I have a remote access VPN in place so that all of my laptops and phones can connect. In fact, I never access public Wi-Fi without my VPN turned on. I also have a VPN to my VPC at Amazon Web Services. This is, of course, where we host the geekpub.com and the 8bitguy.com. Remember those Observium and Syslog servers? Those also monitor the health of our web servers. So we immediately know if a server is down or if there is something wrong with it. Well, that about wraps up this video. For those of you who are interested in some more of the technical details of how all this works, I do have a lot of tutorials on thegeekpub.com, so be sure to check those out. Also, some of you have been asking me how R2-D2 is doing. Well, he is doing fantastic, and don't worry, he will be in some future videos. Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Thanks for watching.